wow, I did not see that coming. Man, I was watching this week's episode of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the website nick.com for the Turtles season finale, and man, I did not see this one coming at all whatsoever. Turns out that Irma, one of my favorite characters from both the 80s version and my most looked forward to character to be brought back in this current incarnation, the best friend of April, that girl who's always been captured by the Foot Clan or something else crazy like that, Lovable little dorky glasses, brown pigtail, frumpy blue sweater, clumsy old Irma, the person who I was even shipping with Raphael so that Leo could have to Ryan and Donnie could have April and Raphael could have Irma. Turns out Irma's a train! Who knew? Wait, wait, where does this come from? Up until now, crane robots have always been a little off from humans walking around and talking as if they have no idea how human society acts. Speaking in the third person, saying things redundantly, having that weird way of talking or speaking. Even the more advanced crane robot wasn't able to completely fit in and blend in with human society. All of a sudden you have one that not only does it look and act and think exactly like a human does, all the way up to the point where maybe even Irma herself didn't realize what she was. But you also have the thing voiced by Gilbert Godfrey for some unknown reason. Why is it that people think Gilbert Godfrey has to voice every crazy evil character in cartoons? What's up with that? And the worst part of this whole thing is that Ninja Turtles has been absolutely impossible to predict what's happening. On the Pony Show, I seem to be pretty good at predicting what's happening by drawing fan art, writing down little fan fiction and ideas, coming up with head cannons, discussing in the forums what I think will happen in the next episode, having my predictions, having a good time with it. In Legend of Tora, I would never be able to predict anything accurately, but I made so many crazy predictions with Tora that it didn't matter whether or not they were accurate, I was just having fun with it. But on Turtles, it seems that almost everything that I want to see happen on this show, first they give it to us, and then they take it away and change it into something else. Like, I really wanted to see the character of Tarai brought back from the second generation Turtles cartoon. And they gave us that. And I wanted to see Tarai form her relationship with Leonardo. I wanted to see her realize that Splinter was her father. I wanted to see her switch sides and fight with the Turtles against the foot, or become her own side and fight against both the turtles and the foot. And they gave us that. But then they had to destroy my Karai and April team up together fan art idea, and instead of giving me 
what I was thinking inside my head. They had to have her fall into mutagen and mutate into a giant shape-shifting snake creature. <laughs> the show is great at giving us what we want. I wanted to see Casey Jones, we got Casey Jones. But then I had another fan idea. I wanted to see April have a point in the story arcs where she has to choose between Casey Jones and living her life as a human or Donatello and allowing herself to be mutated into a turtle so she could be with him as a mutant turtle. But then the series not only decides to shock me by actually dropping April into mutagen, which you think she's going to get rescued at the last minute, but no, they actually dropped her in in one episode. But then they have to completely destroy my brilliant fan story idea by having her turn out that she's immune to mutagen and for whatever reason she can't be mutated. Plus, also they're giving her this uh, mysterious mental telepathy mind X-Man type power, which I don't know what the deal is with that. Okay, so the series is good at throwing us for a little loop once in a while and catching us off guard. I love that they can do that. That's a good thing. I love how they're bringing back old characters from the 80s show, and I love how they're doing new characters that they just made up. I love how they're taking uh, characters and putting like a little twist on them, a little spin on them. But I also like how we're getting our little happy endings, like Kirby O'Neill. He was mutated into a bat and then turned back into human. I love how things are growing and progressing. Then, a couple of episodes ago, when the Turtles had to fight a ghost in Chinatown, the ghost captures April and also captures Irma. And he says something very interesting. He says, Irma, you have a special power also. I just can't figure it out yet. Now, for a couple of weeks, the gears are turning in my head, and I'm saying, oh, cool, what if, it, what if Irma has a special power just like April does? What if Irma's also one of the train's experiments like April was, and she was given special mind powers, or maybe elemental bending, or shape-shifting, or... Uh, maybe she's a really cool ninja fighter. This would be very interesting for Irma because she, April, and Casey to be the three butt-kicking humans on the Turtle series. And she could be there fighting foot clan bots and uh, having better relationships with April and Casey, and she could get into a romantic relationship with one of the turtles, and all this cool stuff could happen. And I start building up my little stories again and thinking in my head what could possibly happen. But then they go and do this. They reveal Irma to be a train droid transformer sleeper agent thing and there goes my ships my plans my stories everything that i thought i knew about irma and it's all wrong why ninja turtles why why are you taking one of my favorite characters and Turning her into a robot brain alien thing that's not even remotely human. Why did we have to lose Irma? Why couldn't it have been Vernon? Why are you doing this to me, Ninja Turtles? You're tearing me apart, Leo! Yeah, Irma is a train robot and starts a 
Ukraine invasion was a twist. So, turns out that the Ukraine invasion is on its way. Ukraine all over the place of all sorts of shapes and sizes and technical abilities arrive on Earth and start attacking. This leads us to a series of different fighting sequences as all of the characters split up and end up in different directions. Casey and Raph are in one set of fights, Mike and Don are in a second set of fights, Leo's in a third set of fights, and Master Splinter is on his own in yet another set of fights. All sorts of crazy action sequences are happening and thrown in is a bunch of references to the 80s series that nobody asked for but were maybe still glad to have had but maybe we didn't need and there might be some easter eggs in there too I'm not entirely certain. Once we get past the almost non-stop action sequences here's basically what we get from all of this. One, a military force built specifically to defend Earth from future alien invasions, meaning that unlike other stories, Earth is actually prepared to take the train on. How much of a success rate they're having is yet unknown at this time, as we didn't follow them, but they could potentially be a organization that we follow in the future as this men in black style armed forces might be a future antagonist against the train and a on again off again antagonist slash ally with the turtles themselves depending on how often their ideologies butt heads. Splinter teamed up with Leatherhead until Leatherhead was sent tossed into the ocean, where he'll be fine, of course. Splinter ended up getting drowned like a rat and washed up on the shores of some place in the sewers, thanks to the assistance of the still mutated Karai, who was barely in this episode and just leading up to that one moment. Shredder's dunes have been defeated, but not forgotten, and of course the Foot Ninjas will be back. Shredder himself was injured, but not severe enough for us to call him defeated. Train Prime had his body destroyed, and his plans to mutate the humans put on a temporary halt, and he ran off, got hit by a van, and we haven't seen him since, but clearly he'll be back too. Krang are all over the city, and now we can trust no one because the Krang technology is so accurate now, and the Krang's speech pattern is so accurate now, that they can now perfectly imitate humans and infiltrate the world's governments at any level and pull all kinds of men in black style alien invasion shenanigans. The mutagen itself has lost the creativity that once had of turning humans into animals and now only turns them into Dimension X natives. We introduced, but also got rid of, a turtle mech. We lost the Shell Razor, introduced a party wagon for absolutely no good reason, and we plunged the entire city of Manhattan into a blackout, which will have consequences down the line, possibly for characters like Mutagen Man or uh, whatever else. At the end of the day, the turtles are defeated and everyone separated. Right now, we are at that nobody won cliffhanger. The train didn't win, Shredder didn't win, the turtles didn't win, Earth didn't win. Nobody won from this situation. We are still waiting to see the ultimate outcome of everything that's happened. Anyhow, that's all I have to say. What do you think? Comment below or make your own video. Thank you for watching and good night.